Hello and welcome to some print and play board gaming. The first of my series is something called Pocket Civ version 2.0. Uh, for those of you who know anything about Civ, civilizations, you know about these types of games. You are trying to build up a civilization from scratch. Pocket or tiny or one card or whatever you use is often mentioned just to make sure that you understand that you can take this in your pocket and have you with it when you're traveling, which is nice. Uh, in my case, I'm not going to do that <laughs> because of the 28 page um, big rule book. What else do we have? We have advanced cards. We have something called event cards. I'll get back to that. Oh, I even have a little extra card for checking in which order you have to do stuff. It's a very good one. And this is my board. Yes, this is my playing board. Now, the thing is, you should have a clean slate of paper, some pencil, and an eraser so you can change anything. I'm using a laminated page, um, which is not the best, but it is what I have. And then I use um, dry eraser markers. The thing about this is that you start with the setup, and that is fixing your own civilization, the country that you are going to be living in. Now you can do this any style, any type. You can take a Nevada or whatever and just do that. But there are some things that you need to know. There's going to be a desert, there's going to be water, and there's going to be five regions that is closing to something called a frontier. Those things are pra practically very useful. Now I'm going to do uh, some sort of I don't know, Gotland, the biggest city in Sweden, and I'm going to make it fatter than it is, because I like it like that. Like so. Now you have to make sure that you have eight regions, and you can never make one of these crosses. They can only be three uh, dividers. And that's because you cannot uh, go from diagonally from sector to sector. So I start by making a sector over there. Here we have a nice little one. And I let that one actually grow like that. And we have one more here. Yet another one. One, two, three, four, five. We need three more. Let's just do like that. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next up, you are going to, let's see what they say here. We have the rules, we can just as well fix it. These are the things that you're going to be counting later on. Yes, randomly give these ones a number. Now, I usually go from left to right, but this time I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it the way I made them, <laughs> mainly because it's perhaps a little bit easier to remember. Oh yes, I did that one before that one, and so on. So, now there has to be a large frontier region, and it has to cover five of your, at least four or five of your, uh, uh, my empire. Uh, so I'm thinking about six, five, four, and three. So let's let's take that one into account as well. So this is the frontier. And we have one, two, three, four. Let's give him a bit over here as well. The rest is C. Uh, and in this case, I could actually do like this. Would be, might be easier. You 
you can do whatever you like, of course. That way we know that the blue thing, that is probably water. Let's say that it is. Next up, any border that does not touch the frontier borders, the sea. Label the sea. Tribes from other kingdoms will visit you from the frontier and from the sea. Now, we need five mountains in our regions, five different regions. Now, I want this to be my desert. <laughs> I've already thought about that. And I want this to be my first city. These are things that is important. So, I want to have a city here later on. So, I build mountains. I also build mountains here. And it's because you need stone. Let's put one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'll take this one as well. Five. Next, we are going to make um, some woods forests and we also need that five of them now remember if you leave a, f a place without a forest or a, a mountain volcano then these will be automatically be, be will be become deserts and we don't like that so we fill this one immediately and that one as well there we have it and I wanted my city here and you need a forest to get a farm and, well, yeah. Uh, I think I put one here as well. So we have stone, we have wood. Now let's see. We have fixed that one. Let's fix this one as well. Like that. Uh, that's that. And we need a desert. And it's this one. I'll try to make some sort of cacti like that. You can also write it down. Uh, we need to keep track of our gold. We also need to keep track of our glory. And we also need to uh, check which er era we are in. Now we are in era 1, I don't have any gold and I don't have any glory. I use that border over there as my, well let's call it status thing. And with that, then we should shuffle this, I have already done that, we should discard these top three and then it's time to play now these event cards are especially <sighs> bothersome if you are in the event oh, sorry in the era that this event occurs then that will happen in this case it is an earthquake oh i've forgotten something all right i'll fix that later on and it's an earthquake. If there isn't anyone, let's see what the next one says, has an earthquake in era 2. If I draw this card, there won't be anything happening in my era. There's only 8 eras to total, so don't bother. And 3. Okay, there goes the bandits. We also need 3 people. Let's make them red. We should start with three people. One, two, three. Yep, that's my tribes. I have three tribes. So, and then you go about your business. Now, in, on this page, page six, you have a quick game reference. It's almost the same as this one. Uh, population growth, movement, draw event card, Advance, build cities and stuff, um, acquire, tribe, and so on, upkeep. 
Now, the thing is, an era is just as much as there are cards in this 13 to be total. After 13 cards, when they are gone, the era is ended. If you have uh, just as many cities as the era number, in my case I need one city because I'm in era 1, then you can move on to era 2 and pick glory points. We should probably have gold in another color. It's easier to see. You get glory points. And glory points we get from our advances that we can get. Now we can't get any if we don't have any cities. So we need a special thing. That's how it works. And then while we have built cities and farms, acquired advances and so on, we have an upkeep. And you get rid of all the gold. The frontier, by the way, is actually a place where you can send people if they are in the neighboring region. So your eight regions, or in this case five, can if I can put people from there to there and they get and get gold. Hopefully they will get gold. So let's start round one. We start by adding a tribe. That's number one. Create a new tribe in each region that currently has at least one tribe. So already there you can see, uh-huh, if I only have one, if I had four different, I would have been safe. Yes, that is true. Um, now, there is a problem. You need at least two icons or at least a city with something called an advance value to keep those tribes. So if I'm going to move, and I'm going to do that, and this was very stupid of me, but I think it's going to work out fine, I will now move two of my tribes um, to this area. I will put them like this. Why? Because I'm going to move that one and yeah. You, you understand. I have two tribes here. Yes, I have two icons. I have two icons. I can have that. And that's it. Now we take the top card and look, is there an, an era one? Nope, it's a era two. So nothing going to happen this time. Good. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. And now let's see if I can do anything here. Yes, I can actually do one thing. I can build a farm. I have two tribes and a tree. If I build a farm, that's my cost. So I'll do that. Why not? It's too early. I feel like it's too early, but let's just do that. And we make ourselves a little farm. Now, that farm is necessary if we're going to be supporting a city. So I can't build a city until I've done that. So, that's that. That's all there is to it. Uh, that's all I can do. Well, I probably could send that one over to the frontier, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, if I don't, and then we come to something called upkeep, and that is reduce city. I haven't got any. Reduced unsupported tribes. No, they are not unsupported. They are two icons. They are safe. And decimate all gold. Well, we haven't got any. So that's fine. That's how it is. And then you go through the same thing over and over again and try to plan. Now, I think this was a bit too stupid. And I think this was a bit too stupid. But I have never played a full pocket sieve myself. There's only eight times you're going to go through the event card pile. And when that's over, you are either going to get points or not. But era two comes. Shuffle, take away three, continue with the 13 new cards. And when you've done that eight times, the game is over. 
and you see what you get. It's sort of very simple, but every explanation of what can happen uh, is in here, and that's why it's so many pages. But once you have learned some of them, and you can also use this to just check, it, it's okay. It, you, you, I think we can manage this pretty quick. Uh, I have totally forgotten what the guy uh, was called. Solmaninsky or something like that. And I think he has made a very good game. Uh, you have the explanation in the, here. So that's our first game. It's called Pocket Civ. It's from 1990-something. And um, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, I need to add some things. Uh, first of all, the guy who's made Pocket Civ 2.0, his name is Scott Stomiani. Uh, the game is from 2005. Uh, age around 12. You can read that on Board Game Geek. Uh, one to two players. Um, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, there is one thing that I probably should add, and that is that you can find it on Tabletop Simulator if you have that program. But for me, it's not really... I don't feel... I don't know. It doesn't feel right. I, I put it in like a... Meh. It, it is good. It's working. So if you just want... If you have Tabletop Simulator and you want to try Pocket Civ without printing out it all you have it there so with that we are through the first one thank you for watching goodbye